Right, so Mobby 7, so this is about biotechnology and microorganisms. Um, microorganisms really, we're talking about bacteria and fungi. Oops, there we go. Bacteria and fungi are the two things. I know viruses are grouped in there as well, but don't, we do use uh, viruses in biotech, but we're not going to uh, really include it here. We're more interested in the kind of microorganisms that can make something for us. Um, now, there's quite a few advantages to biotech. Um, they're very rapid reproducers, so you can make lots of them pretty quickly. Um, in terms of bacteria, they have these little loops called plasmids, DNA loops, and what's good, so good about them, we can insert genes in. Remember that idea of gene modification? Genes added. Um, and so we can engineer bacteria to make things that we want them to make. And we'll come to what some of those things are in a second. Um, they're pretty straightforward organisms. It's not like keeping um, animals like sheep or pigs or cattle or whatever. Um, you basically stuff them into a big tank and you give them a bit of water and some food and you keep them at the right temperature uh, and that's it. It's all you need to do. So they're easy to, to, to keep and to grow and we know what the optimum conditions are. You know, we'll put them at optimum temperature for um, their enzymes to work. We can keep them um, at the right pH. We can control the pH in there. And so it's easy to give them good conditions. Um, there are no ethical or very few ethical considerations. Um, nobody particularly minds if uh, a, a pile of fungi gets killed or is trapped in a kind of fermenter. Nobody's worried. It's not like an animal. Um, so we don't have those worries with it. And very importantly, uh, they can make complex chemicals and they can do it quite easily. So things, um, this is what we're going to look at in a second, um, things like hormones and, for example, insulin. You can get them to make insulin. We can't do that artificially, but we can get um, these microorganisms to do it very, very easily and very quickly for us. Um, antibiotics they can make, which is we'll look at in a second, um, and things that are added to food various enzymes we'll also look at. So specifically what are the, the big products that we um, would be looking for microorganisms to do? Uh, antibiotics and the big one there is or the one you'd be familiar with a fungus called penicillium which is used to make penicillin which is a very very common antibiotic um, Basically, you just grow this stuff in big tanks and you can then turn a, a tap open and, and take out the penicillin. Very easy to do, relatively easy to do. Um, enzymes, which are the things that are um, added to food very commonly. Enzymes are used a lot in the food industry, for example, to, to flavor foods in various ways. Um, controlling texture, for example, if you have chocolates that are, have got a kind of soft center, that's done by adding enzymes in there that will gradually break down the hard center and make it go soft. So that's how we do that. Um, also used in things like um, all, all kinds of uses for food production, making sure your food um, is ready at the right time, all kinds of things. Um, a specific one that might be of interest, there's an enzyme called rennet. And what this does is it curdles milk. And of course, if you have milk, it's a liquid. What rennet does is, when it curdles it, it breaks the milk down and turns it into a bit more of a solid blob. Why is that useful to an organism? Uh, it's easy to digest in that form that it is in the liquid form. Now, rennet used to be extracted um, from cow's stomachs, and it was used to make cheese. Now, a lot of people had problems, ethical problems with that. Um, if you're a vegetarian, a lot of people didn't like to eat cheese that was made using this method. What we've been able to do, what scientists have been able to do, is develop an enzyme called chymosin, which does the same job. And we're able to get uh, yeast, which is a type of fungi, to produce this chymosin. So it can be used to make vegetarian cheese, which has got no kind of connection to um, rennet used in animal stomachs at all. So that can be used, that's a, a good thing. Um, it can be made, uh, used to make biofuels. And what you're looking at here is basically making ethanol, which is a type of alcohol. All right, so biofuels is about making ethanol. Uh, ethanol or alcohol, as we, is the common name for it, um, contains a lot of energy. It can be mixed in and used as a source of fuel. Um, ethanol is made from plant material, and 
there's a lot of a sugar, complex sugar, called cellulose in plant material. It's what makes up plant cell walls. And the problem is um, that cellulose is quite hard to digest. You need the right enzymes. So what you want is a microorganism that contains um, the right kind of enzymes, one called lignocellulase, ends in ASEAs, which tells you it's an enzyme, will break cellulose down. So you can use bits of plant material that can't be used for anything else, bits of old wood even. Um, if you harvest a crop of wheat or corn and you've got the stalks left, you can break that cellulose down into sugars, which can then be fermented by yeast and turned into ethanol. And finally, um, another use from fungal um, microorganisms is something called quorn. Um, you might see it also called, the quorn's a brand name, you might also see it called single-celled protein, or SCP. And it's a good source of protein, of course, because we can make it in um, fermenters, and we can control its uh, the growth, and there's fermenters. We can control how much we get of it, how much we make. It's fairly easy to do. If we want to increase production, we just... Um, make more of it.